Hey guys, Colin here to hit you up with another communication theory, and uh, this one is known as the interactional view. And so this view was founded by a man by the name of Paul Václavic, and uh, he was a senior researcher at the Palo Alto Universe, uh, Research Center in California. And uh, he was influenced by a guy by the name of Gregory Bateson, who was an anthropologist. And so he and his fellow researchers uh, really wanted to study interpersonal communication as a system. And so whenever they looked at this, uh, they rejected, they decided to reject the uh, linear transmission model of communication, which basically says you have a, um, a message here, and basically the exact way that I try attempt to communicate that to you is the same exact way that you're going to receive that. And so they reject that view, and they look at, they picture communication as more of an orchestra without a conductor. And so in that view, they say, each person in that orchestra is playing and affecting others, but at the same time being affected by them. You have here interaction, which gives us the interactional view. And so the interactional view is founded upon four axioms of an understanding of interpersonal communication. And the first one of these axioms is one cannot not communicate. And so here what the interactional view wants to emphasize is the importance of nonverbal and body language whenever we're communicating um, and how that's going to affect your uh, communication. And so even, they uh, even attempt to understand wh what we do whenever we try to not communicate with other peoples. They say we employ the symptom strategy, which is basically saying, um, I would like to try, you know, communicating with you, but something stronger than I for which I cannot be blamed, prevents me. And so a common excuse that we have whenever we uh, employ the symptom strategy is, I'm sick, therefore I can't talk right now. But even in the midst of that, we communicate. The second axiom for the interactional view is communication is made up of content and relationship. And so content is what is said, and relationship is basically how it is said. And so they really want to emphasize relationship here because they, again, want us to understand it's not the transmission model, it's an orchestra. We're being affected by others and we're affecting others with the way we have a relationship with them. Basically, they say the relationship gives a context and an atmosphere for our message or our content. And the third axiom is that the nature of a relationship depends on how both parties punctuate the communication sequence. And so here we really need to understand what they mean by punctuate. Punctuate means labeling one event as the cause and the following event as a response in an ongoing series of events. And so basically here it's saying um, whenever I'm communicating with my mom per se, my mom yells at me labeling that as the cause and saying the response is me yelling back at her. That's what it means to punctuate. And the, re the nature of our relationship depends on that punctuation because we need to have what they call meta-communication. We need to communicate about the way that we are communicating. And the fourth axiom of the interactional view is all communication is either symmetrical or complementary. Symmetrical communication is whenever we have an interchange based on equal power. And complementary interchange is whenever we have an interaction based on differences in power. And so, basically, whenever we do this um, and we have complementary communication, we either have one-up communication, which is an attempt to gain control. We have one-down communication, which is an attempt to yield control. We have one across communication, which is whenever we attempt to neutralize control. And so, um, basically, out of all of this and all the issues that come from our interpersonal communication, um, Paul Václavic wants to offer a solution. And he says the solution is to reframe the situation. And that's basically to take one understanding of a situation and to reframe it into another situation. And so basically, it's taking a viewpoint and changing it and looking at it from another viewpoint. And so he says, whenever we do this, the best way to do this is with outside help. So he says that it's necessary that we have therapy. 
And he says, uh, lastly, that it doesn't matter whether or not that that new uh, viewpoint that we get, that new, uh, re that new frame that we get is true or not. What matters is if it relieves pain or not. And so that's the interactional view, and that's gonna how it's going to help us with our interpersonal communication.